Hey there, welcome back to Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. Thank you for joining me on our YouTube channel, Twin Oaks Farm Poultry, and thank you for joining me in the meat bird production barn at our small farm in rural Southeast Ohio. As you can see, the barn is basically at rest. So it is evening and temperatures are cooling down. We're in June of 2023. We're looking at a flock that is basically just about three days away from its last day of production. And so in the previous video from this one, I referred to heart failure in broilers. And if you have seen that video, or if you go back and, and watch it after the fact of seeing this one, you'll see in that video that I pointed out an example of a bird in the flock that was at that time experiencing heart failure. And so heart failure in broilers, particularly Cornish rock cross meat chickens, is actually a pretty common occurrence. It happens. And the more birds that you work with, uh, the larger flocks that you work with, and um, the longer you keep the birds in grow out, the more often you're going to encounter that. So um, we we have a flock here that started at about 304 birds and going into this last week of production, the birds would have been five weeks old at that point. We were down to about 280 birds. So that actually wasn't too bad as far as flock mortality prior to processing and flock survival at that point. But it's been almost a full week then, and we've lost eight birds this week. And the birds lost this week in this flock have been to heart failure. And so um, that is that is something I would say try to be prepared for if you're going to raise Cornish rock cross meat chickens. And it's really one of the reasons that we only keep them to six weeks because you, you're seeing these birds at five weeks old, visual observation, they have some good size to them, the hens and the roosters. And basically then by six weeks, you've pretty well maxed out the growth potential for the most part. You can keep feeding them and they're going to keep growing, but you've, you've probably at this point gotten as much growth as that bird is capable of and that bird's physical bearing is capable of. So uh, if you've maximized the growth potential, but you keep them alive and just keep feeding them just to make them bigger, you also increase the risk of losing them from heart disease. And so uh, we, we want to maximize the growth potential while we minimize the risk of losing the bird to mortality prior to processing. So, so in that previous video, I, I had shown you an example of a bird that we could identify some factors that it was presenting that showed us it was experiencing heart failure. And I explained that my intention at that point was to uh, do a follow-up video and show you that same bird and you know kind of talk more about that. Well, as it turned out, within about 15 minutes of me completing the filming of that video, that bird actually passed away. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about how that unfolds because honestly if you've never experienced seeing a bird a broiler a cornish rock cross meat chicken die in the progression of heart failure it's really kind of a shocking thing to see usually um there tends to be a phrase kind of used with broilers that end up dying prior to processing of natural causes uh sudden sudden death syndrome in broilers. And so when we first started raising broilers, we heard sudden death syndrome. And, and there were times we would find birds like they had just passed away. They might've been uh, belly down, face down with their wings like partially spread and just flat out on the floor, or they might've been on their back even. And uh, either way, most of those instances are called sudden death syndrome in broilers. But as we raise more broilers, here's what we learned. It's not really sudden. It, it culminates in death. It stems from heart failure and it isn't really sudden because there are actually um, more or less symptoms or signs, indicators that we as producers can pick up on that pretty much tells us that bird is experiencing heart failure. It is in the works chances are the bird isn't going to survive. So um, as, as a Cornish rock cross 
meat chicken producer, it's something that I wanted to just share with you and tell you a little bit about what it's like experiencing. But when a bird goes into acute heart failure, where like acute heart failure, where in that instant it's it's basically dying, if that happens in front of you, that can be really shocking because the first time that we saw it, the bird sort of went into like a convulsion and its wings beat with such ferocity that it um, it got momentum and got propulsion. And I saw a bird like go up in the air, like almost hip high and flip over somersault a couple times and go back down to the ground and do it again two or three more times. And then it passed away. And so that's, I think why it kind of gets the moniker sudden death syndrome, but I'm going to show you, I think there are indicators, and we saw them in that bird in the previous video where we referenced heart failure and broilers. That bird ended up dying prior to processing of natural causes from the heart failure. I've got another one here that I'm going to show you some the indicators on, so I think you'll see it pretty, pretty rapidly. So looking at this barn, I had said they're basically at rest, but even at rest, like for example, look at this bird sleeping but its head is still more or less up. Um, this bird is kind of laying on its side, you know, but its head is more or less up. They will put their heads down without that being an issue, but, well, like there's, there's one there, I'm trying to zoom in on, got its head down. That bird is okay. I don't see its body heaving. The color on that bird looks okay. The feathers look nice and sleek. So I'm not concerned about that bird. On the other hand, trying to find this bird here I am concerned about and so we're going to get closer and show you why so um, I would say this bird here that I've got the frame there centered on is probably in heart failure and I'm going to show you three reasons that I believe that and so probably these two birds flanking it when I approach them they're probably going to move but that bird in the center probably isn't so that's one of the indicators a reluctance to move and no reaction to stimulus around it tells me that I might have a bird in heart failure and I could be wrong it might get up and leave okay so that one beside it left and it still isn't trying to get up and leave okay so the other thing going on there and I don't think I don't think this effect is coming through on the camera, but the feathering, as I'm looking at the bird in person, is taking on a blue cast. And with, like with this bird beside it, it's not. But for me in person, this bird is, and I'm gonna show you why that is, and this is really the second indicator that we probably have a bird that is experiencing heart failure. So if I pull, see, and it's really not leaving, but if I pull this back where we can see some skin, and you may not be able to tell this on film, but this skin is getting a purpled, a purpled coloring. It shouldn't be purpled. It should be healthy, pale pink. So that's really, and on its belly, we can see that. So this is pretty concerning. Okay, so that's the second reason I believe that bird is in heart failure. The third reason, so basically lethargic, not responding to moving away from stimulus, purpled skin, and also, I don't really know how well you'll be able to tell all this, but um, the feathering here on the back of its head, whoop, come on birdie, kind of gets a rough appearance. Um, you know, and it's, it, this is a rooster, but he's just not, he's not doing well. So um, I, I would say pretty certainly that bird is in heart failure, and I, I'm going to guess that honestly we're, we're filming this in the evening on a Friday evening. This video is intended for upload on Saturday morning. I'm going to guess that this bird probably is not going to survive this evening, unfortunately. But it's in heart failure. That is also referred to as ascites. So that would probably be a more veterinary term. We deal with it in more or less in layman's terms. Um, but I'll, I'll spell that for you. You can research ascites, A-S-C-I-T-E-S -E is how you spell that if you need a point of reference for looking that up, but it would be more or less heart failure. So that's, that's at least a visual example I can give you of the difference between birds that aren't presenting as probable heart failure and a bird that is presenting as probable heart failure. And it, you know, that creates a problem with the oxygen balance 
in their body the oxygen supply for them to continue life-sustaining function. And when that sets into motion, you're going to have a problem with that bird being able to survive. There, there are different things that can set that in motion. One of the things is, it didn't happen to this flock, but if birds get chilled, prior to being three weeks old, meat birds, if they get chilled, cold, prior to being three weeks old, you will see mortality in about the fifth week of their life. And we have experienced that firsthand. That does hold true. In this case, uh, these birds have experienced a lot of high heat. Uh, in the fourth week and the fifth week. So we're seeing that, I think, the, the result of that stress in, in the end of the fifth week here. So that's, that's what I see going on. But, but if you see, you know, if you see this posture where the, even at rest, the birds are basically, they're either keeping their heads up or if they're letting their heads go down, they still have a very smooth, filled out appearance to their bodies and you don't see an abnormal, he, abnormal heaving in along their backbone and underneath their wings, those birds are probably okay. But if you have a bird like this presenting with basically reduced reaction to stimulus, looks lethargic, starting to look like even bluish along the feathering because of the purpling on the skin and also seeing, you know, the difference in the feathering across the back of the bird's head and a little bit of a strained look in the face. If you're seeing that, um, it's pretty probable that bird is experiencing heart failure. And, and you'll remember from the previous video, that's a right ventricular failure in the heart of the meat bird. So be prepared for that. If you raise Cornish Rock Cross chickens, we greatly appreciate y'all being here at our YouTube channel and joining us in the barn and in the case of these birds you know they're just they've really grown well in southeast ohio we've experienced this multiple times these flocks that we finish during june they have they have a good uh temperature range basically to grow to start growing finishing and our our biggest birds have been the birds that we finish in june even early june to late june and uh, these birds are just, they're, they're just not even six weeks old yet. So they're going to go to the processor at six weeks old. So thanks for joining us. Put any questions or comments or experience you have with this topic in the comments if you'd like. And uh, as I've said before, we, we greatly appreciate you watching. Thanks for supporting our channel.